Hello again. My name is Billy Hicks, and in this third video, we're going to be talking about indirect viewing of the solar eclipse. Those of you that teach students, maybe grades three, maybe two and under, you're going to really want to pay some attention to this because of the fact that this is a completely safe method of viewing the solar eclipse. Uh, to start with, you just got to steal this out of your kitchen. This is a great solar eclipse viewing tool. Whether you're in totality or just a partial solar eclipse, uh, a colander. Aim this so that it's in a line between the sun and the ground, and you will see projected on the ground hundreds of solar eclipses. If you're in a grassy spot, if you're on pavement, no, 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 no. Move to some place where it's concrete. If that's not a possibility, carry you out a sheet or a big piece of poster paper. Put it on the ground. Hold it up and take some photos of all the students gathering around having partial solar eclipses thrown even upon their faces. So, what a great observing tool. A colander from the kitchen. Now, this next item is very high-tech as well. I have a piece of cardboard, which I have punched about a quarter-inch hole through. I also have a piece of cardboard, and I look for one that was white. This way, we're going to pretend you, viewing the video, you're the sun. I would put this over my shoulder and line it up so that the sun will shine upon the white cardboard. The cardboard is my movie screen. And so I'll just line the two up and we'll have a glorious image while looking the exact opposite direction of the sun. If someone is really short, you don't even need this. Just give them this or let them make this and let them run outside and hold it above the sidewalk. And they will have a solar eclipse transmitted through the hole, shining upon the sidewalk. Wow. This next item I've got to show you is about 2,000 years old. This box is not. And I have found that copier paper box works very well. I like this size. This is a pinhole camera. The very first one in recorded history that we know about was created in China a little more than 2,000 years ago. The way that I build these pinhole cameras is a little different than what you might find on the web. Most of the folks on the web would have you take a sharp object and just poke a hole in your box and view it. I don't like that. I have taken out a two inch square inside my box and then taped over it with aluminum foil using duct tape to secure it. And now, this will be very easy to puncture and put an extremely smooth round hole. I also take a white piece of copier paper and put this up for my movie screen. Now, I will hold this over my head, you're the sun, and I'll give a quick demo. Sunlight will enter a small hole shine upon my screen inside the box and I will have a glorious sight. And not only that, your students will really like this because it gives you shade in the hot August sun. And so, how many of these can you find? I don't know, but your students or you can make them easily. I want to give you one last word of warning. At every solar eclipse I've ever been to, someone has showed up with a welder's helmet. And they start passing it around, knowing that, what, very dark glass, you put it on your head, and you start looking at the sun. The glass is graded in numbers. The higher the number, the darker the glass. I hate to tell you, but the average darkness of the glass is about 10 to 12. This is a piece of glass that would go in the front of this. And you may not be able to read it from there, 
but it's a 10. To be able to view the sun, you must have glass that is at least a 14 in darkness, 14 or higher. You cannot use the auto darkening types of helmets, just the plain old helmets. The glass must be a 14. If a parent shows up with one of these, you must ask them, does it have 14 or darker glass? If they don't know what you're talking about, then you can't use it because most helmets come with 10 or 12 glass. That is not dark enough to protect you from long exposure from looking at the sun. So, in this video, we've spoken several ways to be able to cheaply view the sun while not looking at it, whether it be through a colander, whether it be through a piece of cardboard, whether it be through a pinhole camera, and I've also given you a heads up. There is nothing wrong with parents wanting to help, but it is very wrong if they don't understand that they could be harming someone's eyes and not even knowing it. For most locations, a solar eclipse happens about once every 350, 375 years. I hope that through these videos, it's given you some ideas for your classroom to be able to prep your students before this event, to be able to make some devices to be able to view it, and I hope more than anything else is that you have an enjoyable experience seeing the absolute event of a lifetime. As always, wishing you clear skies.